Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to today I want to go ahead and bring you guys uh, two characters that I'm going to go ahead and be playing in this current league. Now I do have the Trapper that I showed you guys, and he's still alive and everything. There's nothing wrong with him. It's just I don't know what it is for me. I guess I waited so long to play traps. It's just not really super fun. But if I go back to the character, of course I'll give you guys some updates. Now the reason why I'm bringing you two builds specifically is because. I've actually decided I'm going to go ahead and try really hard to play Solo Cell Found and Solo Cell Found Hardcore in this current League Incursion. And the reason why is I've been finding a lack of motivation to play Path of Exile. Holy fucking shit! You ever poop so good you consider becoming gay? Uh, no, I, w I would not, sir. But anyway, like I was talking about with the uh, lack of motivation has nothing about being gay. Um, it's just kind of like... After playing Low Life Righteous Fire and RF Berserker and you know a lot of other overpowered builds and hitting level 100 or deep 90s with them like 98, 99, you realize that like right away you can tell if the build is gonna be fun for you and if you want to commit the time to it. That's why I play a lot of builds like level 85 or level 90 and then I just stop them because if I'm gonna commit any real time to it, the build has to really feel solid to me. And unfortunately, a lot of those builds are kind of like the running builds or the walking builds. Death's Oath, Righteous Fire, and actually even I want to try out Blade Vortex. But that doesn't that doesn't mean that's the only thing I'm gonna play, right? Because when you play Solo Cell Found, you can set up the outline of what you want to play, but it's still kind of cool because based off of what drops, you may be like, oh my god, I've never really wanted to play this, but I can make this build in SSF and it'll help gear my other characters. So I've got two builds for you guys. Enough ranting. Um, now, all these are going to come with is the skill tree and explanation of why I'm playing them. And then I'm going to show you guys the aura calculator link, uh, which basically all this does is you can plug in the stuff you're going to have and it shows you your mana reservation. The reason why that's important is to show you guys like you don't need this crazy gear to get any of this stuff going. It will work with exactly what I'm telling you. So the first character is going to be the Tri-Herald Blade Vortex Elementalist. The reason why I'm going to start with this character is because it's life-based. My other character is going to be a Freeze Pulse Occultist, but it's CI. So let's start off with the Tri-Herald Blade Vortex Elementalist. Now, I know a lot of people have been playing this style of character. I personally have never played it before. I apologize if it's like Flavor of the Month and stuff. I just really wanted to play Blade Vortex, and I've honestly never really played Elementalist very often. So the purpose of playing an Elementalist for Blade Vortex is, number one, Blade Vortex is a physical conversion skill, similar to like EK and Bladefall, which means that it can scale off of things such as Hatred and like Harold of Ash. Um, Mastermind of Discord makes it so that your Heralds cost less mana reservation. So we can run in our Aura Calculator three Heralds and Hatred, which is another thing that's based off your physical, with little amounts of effort put into a reservation on the tree. All we have spec into is just sovereignty, and that's it, and there's nothing else. Uh, and that gives us 9% mana left, which should be more than enough to be able to run our Blade Vortex. So this will give us the ability to ignite, which probably won't really do much damage. We can shock, we can shock reliably because of Elementalist. We get Herald of Ice, which will allow us to explode corpses, um, so there won't be any corpses. And of course, with Herald of Ice, we get, you know, crazy style points. Uh, and then Hatred gives us another large portion uh, of cold damage. There is one item we'll be trying to get off the top of my head that I can tell you, which is going to be a Hrim Sorrow. Uh, Hrim Sorrow is gloves. If someone in chat could just link it really fast. It's basically gloves that give you 50% of your physical damage converted to cold. Using the support gem Fizz to Lightning, that will give us 50% cold, 50% lightning, and then we'll get the added effects of our Herald of Ice, Herald of Lightning, Herald of Ash, and Hatred. Crim Sorrow, thank you. These are Crim Sorrow gloves. Um, so this will give us the full conversion. And now, of course, I think Uniques are in a much stronger st stronger spot with the uh, Temple of Atsawaddle or Quatsahoodle or whatever, Temple of Rayquaza, because you can now double corrupt your items. So if you find a double pair of Crim Sorrow and you don't want to upgrade them, you can double corrupt them. And with the new Implicits, you can get like percent life, I'm pretty sure, and some other really cool stuff. Uh, so I'm really excited for that. Um, so yeah, that pretty much covers the Blade Vortex Elementalist. I cannot cover too much on your links. Um, understand that at the beginning you're probably just going to use multipliers. 
Um, that's things like, for example, there's like control destruction, there's elemental focus, um, there's also like faster casting, you'll probably use spell echo at level 38. Uh, you can probably probably try leveling with just a simple uh, like added cold, added fire, added lightning at the beginning. It really shouldn't be too much of an issue. And in terms of leveling weapons, uh, leveling weapons, you'll probably be aiming for things like anything out of the Temple of Quatza Rayquaza, because it'll be like a 100% spell damage dagger, for example. Uh, Endgame, you probably are going to look for your physical conversion and or physical additive, like the Shaper stat sticks and stuff like that. Uh, if you're not really aware of what they do, it's basically like the Aura Hatred attached to a weapon with no mana reservation. It's very strong. Um, and you'll probably use that instead of a shield if you want more damage. And then... Uh, as for your chest piece, if you're looking for clear speed meta, you may potentially go for an Impulsa, um, which is basically, uh, it makes it so when you kill a shock target, they explode, and it will just cascade and continue. Um, kind of like Profane Bloom, if you guys played my Death's Oath character. Or, you could also go for like a Belly of the Beast or something else. I don't think there's really anything wrong with that. So that covers the character. Uh, just to show you guys probably how I'm going to path, I'm not 100% sure. Um, so Shadow is damage on the right side, Templar is a mixture of mainly like life and stuff like that, but I'm probably going to say I'm going to go down to Scion first, just because you get the skill effect duration, and I'm pretty sure Blade Vortex needs skill effect duration. I don't know if I have to come down here and grab even more skill effect duration, but that's an option as well, we can get like a bunch of resistance down here. So um, pretty much the pathing would be pretty simple, you're just going to path out, uh, you know, grab your uh, heart and soul move across. I'm gonna, I'm probably just gonna fucking rush the duration nodes, pick them up, grab Shaper, go down to pick up Constitution, and then most likely stop there. Uh, I personally really like leveling with Elemental Resistance bonuses, so I'm gonna come down into here, grab my Elementalist, grab Light of Divinity, grab Amplify, I actually think it's better to maybe swap those. Um, pick up Devotion, this is good for strength requirements for like added fire or whatever it is that you're using there. I uh, most likely will not come up here and touch this until I'm ready to run like Hatred. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, the thing is though, is like Chaos Resistance seems really important in this league. So that's kind of why I put an emphasis on the Purity of Flesh, because the Temple of Rayquaza is pretty mad with all the constructs. Um, and then over here on the right hand side, we'll probably like come up, grab Annihilation, grab Blast Radius, and then... Oh, look at that, we can save another point. Um, or maybe I should swap that with this. And then we're just going to book it all the way over to Shadow. Like I said, this is the damage side. So whenever you feel you want to get more damage, you've got like, for example, uh, Will of Blades into like Fangs of the Viper. You've got the Crit Multi at Assassination. You've got Elemental Focus, which I wouldn't recommend picking up Elemental Focus until you grab Beacon of Ruin because this will amplify the Ignite off of this. Um, so that's kind of nice to know. I also wouldn't recommend picking up the sovereignty down here for the reservation until you grab your mastermind of discord um so that should hopefully explain all the progression through that and anyway let's go on to the freeze pulser so the freeze pulser uh i don't really have any information for you guys this is kind of a unique character i just thought of uh one thing to note is with the freeze pulser you will be utilizing the jewels called first snow if you're not familiar with where to get first snow you do get first snow off of, let me see if this screen will pull up, uh, Act 5, after you kill Avarius or Avarice, whatever his name is, you do get the quest reward for the first snow jewel. Um, you're probably going to want to utilize two of them, but at the beginning you're only going to have one, so we're going to make do with one and see how well it goes until we get the second one. Um, now again, this character is a CI character, and the reason why we're playing as an occultist is for the following. I was gonna, I was telling myself like, what are the benefits of playing between what and what because everything was usually just played as an Inquisitor. I can't play another Inquisitor, I'm gonna quit the game. It's just too, it, it's too normal, it's not cool or anything, right? So I was like, oh, I'll play Hierophant. Hierophant sounds cool, you get Arcane Blessing. Even if you go self-cast, it looks pretty cool. You get Arcane Surge for free, you get Immunities for free, you don't really have to worry about it. And then I was like, oh, I can go Mind Over Matter, but then it's like, I don't know, I'm not really making too much use of like everything else on this. Um, so I was like, you know what, let's see what Inquisitor, or sorry, let's see what Occultus gets. And Occultus gets Wicked Ward and Vile Bastion. So what these two do is it gives you a very nice buffer of energy shield. Um, as a SSF character, you're not going to have much gear, so that's why I really like Occultist. You get 8, 16, 24, 32% ES, which is more than 5 nodes on the tree. 
you also get the 250 flat ES, which is equivalent to a like newbie shield. Um, and then you get the following. You also pick up the um, you also pick up malediction. Now let me explain why this is kind of cool. Also, what someone in chat said, they made a very good point. If you play the Blade Vortex first, you can actually get a first snow, and then you can get two first snows in total, so that'll be great. Um, you just give it, you know, put it in the bank. So, <clears throat> one of the big issues I have with playing self-cast builds is I don't like leech mechanics, and it's very difficult sometimes to acquire leech in the game, especially if you're playing an ES build. That's kind of why I wanted to play Hierophant, because Hierophant does offer leech an Elementalist offers Leech, but Freeze Pulse is not an AoE, and I don't want to play Totems, so I was like, let's go Occultist. The combination of Wicked Ward and Vile Bastion makes it so when you get hit, um, and you wait, you know, between that time before your ES kicks in again, you get so much uh, sustain, it's better than Leech. It's, it literally is better than Leech. I've played this combination so many times. It's just something a little bit different, because you can't just stand still, you sometimes have to move around. Since you're playing Freeze Pulse and you're going crit and you're going to be freezing, the intervals between when you get hit is probably going to be a lot less compared to most builds. Um, so that's kind of why I really wanted to try this. This also means I do not have to get Ghost Reaver. If you want to play Leech instead, Ghost Reaver is right here. It's literally two points to respec and there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, if you want to try to grab Essence Surge, you can do that as well. I don't really like this node. Uh, but anyway, moving on uh, with this. You do also get Profane Bloom, which means that you can curse all enemies, so you don't ever have to worry about that snake running at 6,422% movement speed with four different affixes with a Volatile, because he's going to be stuck all the way in the back, he's going to be frozen because he's a little bitch. Uh, and then Malediction, which is like the, the big boy one. Malediction makes it so when you kill an enemy, for each curse on that enemy, gain 8%, which would be 16%, right, because two curses. Um, of your non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage. That's very, very strong for our Freeze Pulse. We also get the Malediction buff, which reduces their damage and increases our damage, or makes them take increased damage, which is a multiplier. Because that is just increased damage, that will also scale the chaos damage we gain. Previously, we were thinking of playing Scion. Someone had the suggestion of like Inquisitor and Occultist, which is not a bad, a bad option at all. Um, but for example, Inquisitor says like nearby enemies take 10% increased elemental damage. The other one is much better because it's global to everything. So that was really cool. I'll probably be running Temporal Chains and Assassin's Mark. Uh, most likely Temporal Chains on Blasphemy and Assassin's Mark on uh, Herald of Ice, Curse on Hit. So if we look at our Aura Calculator for this one, our Aura Calculator looks like this. We are running one Blasphemy, which is Temporal Chains. Uh, I personally am a big fan of Temporal Chains because it prevents you from being surrounded. It also makes it easier to freeze targets because of like the way Temporal Chains works. Um, I don't know why I have Herald of Ash here. It's supposed to just be Herald of Ash, doesn't make a difference. Um, so this is with Blasphemy, uh, Discipline, and Herald of Ice with zero mana reservation. Um, we will be getting a little bit of mana reservation on our character. Uh, we have mana reservation right here, this is 4%. We also have Mono Reservation down here, another 4%, and then we get, oh, well, that's about it. So we will have enough to actually cast, and there are a couple options of, um, of um, what is it called, of like some more reservation you can get on the tree. Not the tree, but like in gear, but this also leaves you with 11% open. Free Spulse doesn't cost that much mana, so it should be fine. Also, another reason why I want to play Free Spulse is it was changed completely, and it looks really cool. Uh, and with the new changes, I don't believe you need to get nearly as much projectile speed. So that's another really, really cool reason for being able to play as an occultist. So anyway, um, one more thing to talk about is that Vile Bastion also gives you stun immunity. So that's really, really cool. So let's now talk about the skill tree and stuff. So <clears throat> with our skill tree, since we're playing it as CI, uh, I opted to stay on the right side of the tree and actually not pursue Templar because we're not going to need any of this stuff, like this extra reservation, unless maybe we're trying to force in Tri-Curse, but I don't really wanna do Tri-Curse right now. Um, so we're just gonna stick with it like this. And instead I opted out to pick up these nodes, which I don't usually pick up anymore. However, we do get the cold damage, cold damage, cold damage, cold damage, big cold damage penetration, and we also get freeze duration. Freeze duration is very strong for freezing targets. 
So you get 20% freeze duration here, and then we also get another 20% freeze duration here with the extra cold damage. I typically don't pick up clusters like this, but since we're playing in a cultist, which is a defensive ascendancy, we do have more flexibility with our points to pick up damage. So that's kind of what we did. Um, this is at 118. Uh, you could like literally cut off like a cluster here, it'd be 114. You do have some flexibility with how you navigate your tree. We also do pick up elemental resistance. So we get 16% elemental resistance right here. Um, that's really nice because you always want to try to get some type of resistances, especially when you're playing SSF. It just makes it a lot easier for you in terms of like gearing up. And uh, lastly, we have picked up things like leadership for increased area of effect of aura skills because that will increase the range of our blasphemy. And in my opinion, having a large blasphemy temporal chains is one of the most overpowered things you can have in Path of Exile. The ability to slow down monsters makes a huge, huge benefit, um, in my opinion. Um, I also picked up flash nodes because since we are playing an occultist, we don't get free immunities, which means we're gonna need like immunity to bleed, ignite, shock, blah, 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 blah. Um, Alchemist helps keep uptime on those. That's pretty much about it. I can't really think of anything else. Of course, everything is just a template for you guys, and I just wanted to let you guys know what I'm going to be doing. Uh, hope you guys, if you're playing SSF with me, let me know where your adventures take you. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I'll have both of these two along with the aura calculators linked on the YouTube video in like five to 10 minutes after the video has been uploaded. Um, and then I pretty much can't wait to see you guys. But a quick sneak peek of my old trapper that I was playing. <clears throat> Before we start, since we did fix the lag, but for some reason the lag, oh, actually I just got an exceptional error and now my game is in windowed mode. Um, that's not good. Um, okay, let me try that one more time. Um, Yeah, temp chains increases the duration of things on targets, which includes freeze. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm like lagging really bad for some reason. This is very odd. Windowed. Uh oh. Oh no. I broke POE again. Alright guys, we're just gonna end the video there. I don't know what's happening with my client, but it's not very happy right now, so... Oh, oh! No, 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 no. Okay, I'll do keep and then full full screen. Full screen. That's not my resolution. It's 1920 by 1080. Hello? Oh. Keep. Okay, I'm still kind of lagging for some reason, but it's okay. Let me just show you guys. The blade falls. of resolution i hope it's not 30 fps it feels like it's lagging i don't know what happened oh it's probably because i'm recording and oh my god hello lag okay boys this is not gonna even i'm on a fucking slideshow right now <laughs> i don't know what i did to my poe dude i don't know what happened but it's fucking mad now <laughs> okay <laughs> this is this is where the video ends chat hope you guys had a wonderful time like i said for the 14th time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves no, dude, my CPU is at 20%. It's not even overloaded. It's just it's just mad. It's just really upset right now. <laughs> I'll see you guys all later, YouTube. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. Take care, everybody.